Um, most of the concepts that we teach today in uh, business schools, we have learned by observing uh, companies. Many of these concepts that we teach today as theory, we have learned by observing companies, uh, particularly in the automotive uh, sector. That's changing now. The new lessons we are learning and new concepts that we are building, we are learning by observing a new type of company which we refer to as the digital titans. And in particular, the kind of person who comes out and manages or leads companies learning from these digital titans, we refer to this person as a, as a digital innovator. How did this um, uh, happen? How did we come about to following digital titans? And by digital titans, we mean companies like Facebook, uh, Amazon, Alphabet, Apple, Tencent, Baidu, and Alibaba. Um, how, how did this happen? How did this come about? I think Mark Andreessen captured this uh, moment pretty well when this transformation occurred. The leadership moved from the old era companies to the new era companies. And he called this uh, phenomenon as software is eating the world. Many of you would have heard that uh, before. What he meant by that was every product or service has now software embedded in it. Now, when you put software into a product or service, it just doesn't do a plus. But what it does is it changes how this product or service behaves now. It becomes more like, and the company itself becomes more like a software company. And what that, the consequences of that are that now you have to behave and treat uh, other companies as partners in your ecosystem, and you move into something called ecosystem-based uh, competition just with this act of introducing software. But companies just didn't stop there. In addition to adding software, they also connected these things um, and put sensors on them. And that created this whole um, transformation that we are seeing. The transformation actually started because these smart objects, these data objects with software and connectivity started producing boatloads of data. And the assumption is that hidden in the data are information about your products and services in the market that you start thinking about this data as, as an asset. Now, if you look at the, um, the, this asset and how do you get value out of it? This is where digital strategy comes in. By digital strategy, what we mean is an action plan that helps you understand the ecosystem and then use the technology to get insights from this data and, and compete um, uh, effectively. In fact, the actions that you can take could result in highly, even high, more highly personalized products and services that you could introduce into the uh, uh, marketplace. Here's where the, the titans come in uh, very handy. Because the titans have figured out how to do this very effectively. And in fact, they are now creating the multipurpose platforms of the day. And they are a threat to companies in every sector. For example, if you take um, uh, the traditional sector, some of the companies have responded very well. And it's worth learning from them, too. So if you take a company like GE, GE was threatened by these platforms, general purpose platforms that are showing up, and they responded with their own version of it, which they referred to as industrial internet, and their platform itself as Predix. A company like Ford has introduced Sync, and they've used concepts like digital replicas to combat this. Even agriculture has been impacted. John Deere today does something called precision agriculture in order to respond to the threat from these uh, digital titans. When I say a threat from digital titans, what I mean by that is they are ending up commoditizing industry after industry. Let's take a simple example of the automotive sector. When Google introduced uh, Android Auto, or Apple does the CarPlay, what this does is that it takes a car, where we used to talk about the mechanics of the car, and changes the conversation to software and its features. So today, when you look at a, a car ad, it's more about the software and connectivity that you're talking about. And this happens in software sector. Every time a new layer of software is formed, they make the layers below it 
obsolete or commoditized. So this uh, operating system actually made the conversation about cars more about software features. In fact, Uber has taken it a step further. They created a layer of service even above the Android Auto and the CarPlay, and then they're treating transportation as a service and commoditizing everything else uh, beneath it. So this is the threat that exists in sector after sector. Now, looking at all these moves and counter moves, uh, what I've done is come up with seven lessons that one should take away from this in order to be like uh, act like a digital um, titan. Number one is this notion of a digital customer. Um, in, a, in the traditional uh, uh, competitive sense, when you add an extra customer to your portfolio, this may typically result in addition of physical assets. But today, when you add for the digital customer, most companies, the digital titans, when they add a customer, they add information assets. And if you treat the customer right and provide the right value, they will give you data in exchange for the interaction that you have with them. And this data is the one that's turning out to be the critical asset. The second thing that um, we learned from observing the digital titans was this concept called a digital uh, replica. Uh, what this is is that every uh, asset the company uh, has will also have a corresponding uh, digital version of it. So for example, if you have a car, if Ford has a car on the street, they will have a digital version, a digital model of the car, along with information about the current status of that car. So this would mean that not only you need modelers who understand cars, the mechanics and so on, you also need the current state in order to be able to say what the car is actually doing right now. So if you think about product recalls, as opposed to recalling every car, now you can recall specific cars. Maintenance, as opposed to doing maintenance on a schedule, you actually do it based on the reality in there. So if a particular part is failing, then you can catch it before that and deal on it with it uh, one, and one, one, one at a time. The next concept um, I want to talk about is this notion of consumption um, ecosystem. So far, we have been focused on the production aspect of things, the supply chain aspect of things. But what the digital titans are telling us is, look at how a, project, a product is being consumed. So for example, today most people like to hack into products, it's do it yourself, or user-driven innovation has become pretty popular. What that does is, although you may introduce a product with a particular idea in mind, how consumers end up using it turns out to be quite different from what you had intended. Now as opposed to trying to redirect them to use it the way you want it, instead, it's now possible to find out how they're actually using it, and then add to that value. So for example, if you take the Nest thermostat uh, and you put it out there, now it's possible to track the fact that customers are connecting it with an LG washing machine, or your automatic door lock, or your garage opener, and so on. But what if that you find that the home automation uh, or the digital assistant they connected with always happens to Amazon Echo? Now, Google can look at that and say, well, we need to introduce a product which is just like Amazon Echo, and they will push now on Google Home. So it's possible to understand how the network of connections of your product is evolving, and then make sure that your products play a key role in that particular uh, network. The next idea that these digital titans have taught us is ex the idea of experimentation. Uh, they don't assume that they know uh, what's going to happen. And they don't launch it before they understand the market uh, very well. So Amazon would at the same time have many experiments going on. Um, right now they're doing some experiments, the retail Amazon Go. They have uh, drones dropping off stuff right, right now, or Amazon Fresh. These, these different experiments are going on. They learn from it, and then they decide uh, what product or service to do. Same goes with Ford. Ford did 25 mobility experiments recently to figure out how mobility is going to impact them. And many ideas came out of it, in some with help from third parties. One of them was my Ford Pass, which now allows users to find parking spots in crowded cities, which turns out to be a very important problem. So the new releases, they have come up with a solution um, um, to that. 
Now the trend which we observe with digital, uh, with, um, digital titans is this concept of um, uh, digital engines. So they are now using uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning techniques to get a lot out of their uh, data. And then they are using those insights to provide even better products and, and services. In fact, what they've done is they've taken some of their core assets and started providing it as a service. So if you take um, um, Facebook, they provide Torch as a service. Amazon just announced that they're going to provide AI as a service. So it's now possible to use the engines that these companies are being using in your own uh, settings. The, another the consequence of uh, what the, ha, it's happening out there is now you can rethink how, where you want to embed the decisions, either when you're designing the product or when the product is being used. Tesla changed the conversation by saying when they added a feature to the car, they send it as an update electronically, so it was uh, every car got an autopilot, but it was done uh, uh, through the uh, internet. Wirelessly, it was done some of those updates. Similarly, when you have an autonomous car, some of the decisions can be made locally. So if you want to know how the car's ride has to be, whether it's going to be the, it's going to have an economic uh, version or a comfort version or a sporty version, you, that's a local decision. But if you want to plan a route, you can get the information, weather and traffic patterns uh, centrally. So you can redistribute how you make these decisions. One of the interesting new products that I saw was this Nike shoe, where now you can, the, while Nike makes a lot of wonderful decisions in the factory and designs the shoe, the decision about how snug it should be could be made locally now, because as users decide how to change it, they can change the snugness of that uh, uh, fit. Another lesson which, which is critical was um, these uh, digital titans operate simultaneously in multiple interlocked ecosystems. So it's not just one thing they do at, this, uh, at a time, they do multiple things at the same time. So if you take a company like Amazon or Google, they are in the media business, they, are, they have an, um, in the operating system business, they are in these multiple businesses and in some businesses, they're driving the show. They are a platform provider. In other businesses, they're simply a component provider. But no matter what, the different roles they play, they partake in the profits they get from these multiple e ecosystems. So it's not just about focus on one thing, but simultaneously being present in, in multiple um, uh, ecosystems. So while these, uh, these possibilities exist, one of the things that's coming out as a major issue is the data that's coming out of all these exercises and how do you treat this data. Not a week goes by where you hear that some company has been hacked, the data has been compromised. So one has to be cautious about the data uh, one collects. Uh, the other thing that you need to be careful about is the, uh, the use of algorithms. Uh, we are using algorithms quite a bit right now and many of these algorithms come up with uh, decision rules that get automated within these uh, companies and they are embedded deeply in these algorithms. One should be aware of that and be able to audit what are the rules that we are putting into these systems and if there's any systematic bias that starts creeping into the system and this, is, uh, which, this should be a major um, uh, concern. As individuals, what should you uh, uh, do? I think the first thing is um, you got to understand that the transformations that are happening right now are going to be led by what we are referring to as digital innovators. So it's very important for you to follow the digital titans, be able to understand the different moves they're making, deconstruct those moves, and come up with your own set of um, lessons, lessons learned. In other words, learn how to learn about these uh, companies. The fact that these digital innovators are going to lead in every sector is clear now. The question is, do you want to be a digital innovator?